Hello everybody, welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin and I'm an Inkscape developer and I develop features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Um, the first thing I always do is I want to give a big thank you to all of the people that sponsor my work. Essentially, the deal is, instead of waiting for programmers to sort of randomly fix the things that might be interesting to you or randomly uh, support the features that you need, um, you pay a developer like myself who can focus on the things that are important to you and essentially make sure that the things that are that users need get done. Um, we've been running this pro program for about three years now and uh, yeah, I think we're doing quite well. Um, for those who are new to these updates, I've been working on uh, the CMYK color model support and in the last few months we've been doing PDF support. So let's talk about some of the stuff that we've got up to with the PDF work. Um, essentially, we've been doing all of the text support. Uh, this includes making text that can uh, position itself on the screen correctly um, with all of the rotations and transformations that you can apply to text in an SVG, as well as all of the transformations that you can apply to individual lines or individual T-spans within an SVG, and translating that to instructions that you can have in the PDF. Um, I'm very cognizant of the fact that the PDF that you output needs to actually be accessible in some ways. So for example, we can't just output the text as paths, it should be text. Uh, this is for screen readers, but also so you can select and copy the text as text. Um, and it needs to be a part of the same text block. Uh, so that say, for instance, if you've got a bunch of different lines, you can still select all of those lines together as one piece of text. Um, anything that uh, reorders the temporal nature of the text within the PDF actually causes issues for uh, the kind of PDF that you output. Um, maybe this isn't a problem for CMYK output where it's just going to print, but the whole idea is is that while this work will produce CMYK, color spots, other stuff, uh, PDF files, we do want to replace the Cairo P PDF exporter as well, right? We don't want to support two different PDF exports depending upon whether you want it to be accessible or not. Um, so yes, uh, getting all the positions correct, making sure that they're accessible, uh, getting the font support fixed, uh, a shout out to Juicy who uh, added support for the uh, true type font collections and improving the glyph support within Capy PDF, that's the upstream library that I'm using. Um, that has been important to improving the support. Uh, big thanks to Tav uh, who helped me figure out how to do layout and positioning. Um, what happened this past week in the Inkscape world is that the Inkscape project did a, um, a summit or a, a contributors event where we pay for developers to come to, in this case, Frankfurt and work on things together. Um, so I managed to attend remotely because uh, I'm in the United States and uh, I, we got to collaborate and work on stuff. Um, it was funny actually because I, because I'm in the US, I was actually up at 3 a.m. and I was attending these uh, the, the vi these video chats to the entire room, um, you know, from three to I think about like 10, uh, 12 a.m. Okay, so um, as well as the text positioning stuff, we also have text style. Uh, text style is interesting because uh, we need to make sure that the text can be painted in lots of different ways. There are lots of corner cases that a lot of pe people won't actually experience, but we want to support it in the best way that we can. So for example, I want to make sure that if you apply a gradient to a piece of text, that can be done correctly. If you have a stroke on a piece of text, that can be done correctly. Uh, any kind of stroke options that happen, and not just um, strokes and fills and things that you apply to the entire text block, but say for instance if you select one small piece of text and apply something different to that text, that the, the entire text block is still one single text block and uh, that piece of text is still rendered correctly with a different fill or a different stroke or whatever the other options are. There are some limitations that I'm hitting with the PDF specification itself. Uh, you can actually see that some of the renderings are missing. And what's interesting about these is that when I send these PDF files to people that have Acrobat Reader or the Chrome uh, PDF Reader, the output is different. And that is interesting to me because the PDF spec is ambiguous about what the support of graphic states and advanced stuff like patterns and gradients is when it comes to a text block. Um, so I need to probably do some investigation to find out how much effort it would take to support things like text patterns um, 
should we say, in a, in a robust way that lots of different PDF renderers can support. The alternative is that I make the PDF export do the correct thing, but then uh, that the, the existence of those files puts pressures on readers to support those features properly in the PPD PDF spec, or at least consistently, right? Like th th when you start hitting the ambiguous parts of the specification, that's when all of the different readers start doing different things because they don't know what it is that they're supposed to do. Um, this is especially important for things like transparency. Uh, you know, if you have a transparent piece of text, um, but other certain things like font clipping, um, being able to put the stroke on top of the fill in strokes uh, in text, uh, all, all of that is complete. I'm very ha happy with the results, especially since the font support and the text positioning stuff is all done. It makes it easier to test those things as well. And um, yeah, so we're, we're, we're really, really close to having a sort of supportable uh, PDF export. And you'll notice that from the previous uh, videos that most of the other elements of the PDF support is already there. Uh, everything from mesh gradients to gradients. I did some refactoring of various things to help with styles. This is uh, to cut down the number of instructions that are necessary so you don't have to keep on repeating yourself saying, for instance, uh, you know, the stroke width is two, the stroke width is two, the stroke width is two for every single uh, rectangle that you might do. Um, if we know that the textile is the text width, the stroke width has already been set to two, we don't need to set it again. Right. Stuff, stuff like that to help the PDF output be uh, less verbose, uh, smaller, and hopefully uh, quicker to render as well. Okay, so that's all of the um, work that I've been up to for the past two weeks. Let's talk about what has been happening in the Inkscape project more generally. Um, so we have approved a bug fix pro program for the 1.4x um, session. What we're going to do is we're going to hire two programmer contractors uh, for 140 hours each uh, to fix pro pro problems. Uh, they'll focus on 1.4 and they will also be backporting those fixes to master so that you know 1.5 also be fixed. So hopefully that, that focus on bug fi fixing will help. Uh, there's a, a um, also a um, bug administrator position. This is some, something new that I wanted to try out, which is basically we're, we're going to hire a contractor for 60 hours who is focused not on programming, but on uh, looking after issues and making sure that uh, bugs are triaged correctly. The people who are doing the programming have the support needed for, you know, uh, having bugs that are tagged, having bugs that are prioritized correctly, having crash reports to be uh, successfully um, repeated so that we understand that these issues are important and they need to be worked on. And the pro programmers have a sort of direction to move in um, that helps make the process more efficient. At least that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. It's, it's a new pro program. Um, Google Summer of Code is coming up soon. Inkscape as a pro project has applied. We will find out from Google if we were successful. We have been successful in every time we've applied previously. Uh, we do have a number of new pro programmers who are interested in, in, in that program themselves. Um, we've been working on um, uh, fixing some of the issues with the website. Uh, there's a contributor who has been working with me on uh, getting a new um, web server set up with a new version of CentOS, whatever they call CentOS these days, uh, a new version of Django and a bunch of other work. He's been really helpful in sort of doing some of that administration work. Um, we'll see how that process goes. and. A lot of the work that's actually been happening uh, from volunteers and a bunch of other pe people in Inkscape has been, especially in, in Frankfurt, was 1.4.x, uh, sorry, 1.4.1 release. So the next, the bug fix release for 1.4, uh, they've been back porting a bunch of fixes. They've been making sure that stuff is triaged um, to gear that up correctly. We don't know if the bug uh, contracting pro program will happen before or after that actual release. But either way, like bugs will be fixed and releases will be made and hopefully Inkscape will be better, uh, especially some of the stuff that got regressed or broken in 1.4.0. Um, so a big thank, thank you to all of the donors that like help with that process and all of the volunteers that actually get stuff fixed. Um, okay, I I think that's probably about it. I'll probably talk more about what happened in the Frankfurt stuff with extensions and a bunch of other things, but this video was already long, long enough. So thank you for bearing with me this week, and I hope I 
We'll see you next time.